Aya! Welcome! Records Roundup 19 today, and I've had a lot of stuff arrive. Still got plenty on the way as well. A lot of stuff come in the post today, and some stuff that's come within the last week or so. So I thought I'd do number 19 today, and then number 20, I'm sure, will be following on very soon. I think we're going to start with a mail opening and end with a mail opening as well. Or two mail openings, actually as I've had three pieces of mail arrive. Before I get going, although I'm recording this in advance of when the video's going out, I do want to thank everyone who so far, at the time of this video being published, has entered the JB2K contest. Thank you so much for your support for the channel and for the contest in particular. I appreciate every single person who's recorded a video entry. You've got till February the 2nd if you haven't entered yet but you're interested. Of course the link for that is at the very top of the description text box and of course down there you will also find my Patreon link, Facebook group link and referrals for contact insurance, HMV and just generally lots of interesting and useful stuff. Right then, on with the programme. CD to open which was from a Discogs seller and this one is another Liebach CD and if you cast your mind back to records roundup 18 when I purchased Volk from Mute Bank I thought that was the one remaining Liebach studio album I needed to finish that collection I was wrong there was another one that I didn't realize was a studio album but it is classed as one and there again, like Volk, it never came out on vinyl, which I have been predominantly collecting live back in. And I've got a DVD and a Blu-ray, but I mean, sort of audio-wise, I have preferred to be collecting live back on vinyl, but there is stuff that they've released that physically has only come out on CD. So as I'm getting into this package here, come in a jiffy envelope, there's a bit of cardboard that's just fallen on the floor, and it's wrapped in bubble wrap as well. I think this cost me, including a couple of quid in postage, this was £9. Which I was pleased to pay, to be honest, because this album, for some reason, it's not, I wouldn't say it's rare as in it's worth a lot, but not many people seem to be selling it on eBay, and um, even Discogs, it was fairly limited. But this is, and I'm going to butcher the name of it, I know, Liebach Kunst der Fuge, or Kunst der Fuge. <laughs> difficult to say that when you're English without worrying that you're about to drop a particularly harsh swear word. <laughs> so what this is, and uh, it's a pre-owned copy as you can probably tell, condition wise is great but it's not sealed in cellophane is what I mean. What this is, or was, is Liebach's interpretation of Johann Sebastian Bach's suite. I'm never sure what to call classical music because I don't listen to enough of it. Um, the Art of Fugue, or Fuge, I think it's Fugue. There's something about this being premiered at some festival and it was also played during a chess match or something as well. I don't really understand quite sort of what went on. There is a little bit of information on screen as you can see and for more information I suggest going to Wikipedia or Liebach fan sites or something like that. Glad I've got that because I was aware of it but I think I just didn't look closely enough into it. I assumed it was another Liebach live album which I wasn't in a mad rush to get on compact disc, but no, this is technically classed as a Liebach studio album. Liebach Kunst der Fugue. And we stick with Liebach, and this is another Discogs purchase, one that came a few days ago, and um, it's a Liebach compilation, Anthems to be precise. There again, pre-owned, uh, I've not taken it out of this cellophane, but this is cellophane that the seller presumably would have used. I'll take it out now and have a better look at it, because I like these sort of CDs, because um, it's coming like a digibook type format. Let's get rid of that sticky cellophane. It's got that sort of hardback book type of aesthetic to it. And it's a two disc set. One of the discs is in that pocket. Oh, we've got a lovely booklet in the middle there. I'll enjoy reading that while I'm listening to this, presuming that it's in English, of course. And then another disc. So disc one is a lot of Liebach's best-known stuff. Quite a lot of repetition from the introduction to Liebach CD that I showed you in Records Roundup 18. 
Although that one was more or less exclusively lie-back cover versions, whereas this one will have a lot of the covers on, but it will have some original stuff on as well. And this too is remixes, so uh, I think all those remixes, or the very vast majority, I won't have heard before. I can't remember how much this was, but it wasn't expensive, and I think it's a little bit easier to get hold of than the previous Lieback CD I showed you. But I just thought, as you know, I'm filling some Lieback gaps CD wise, I'd get anthems as well. So pleased to have both these Lieback CDs today, with because as of me recording this, it's not much after the Christmas period. I'm getting a lot of these videos shot quite well in advance, as you may be able to tell. And uh, Juno have really impressed me because. I made two separate orders within a couple of days of each other and both of them just came almost instantly and with it being Christmas and New Year and extra bank holidays and such like, Royal Mail strikes as well, I expect delays but um, these have come sooner than I expected really. So the first album from Juno that I'll show you, I think does anyone in the vinyl community not own this yet? Of course up until like a couple of days ago I would have held my hand up and said, yeah, I don't own that yet, but I do intend to buy it. And it was a good price on Juno. Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. I think this is a 2016 remastered edition. It's got one of those... I do like these big hype stickers, actually, that give you the track listing, and it lets you know who has remastered the album. In this case, it's the usual suspects, James Guthrie, Joel Plant, and Bernie Grundman. It's also got another hype sticker there as well. The cellophane's tearing a little bit there in what is ironically sort of a triangular shape. The tear matches the pyramid, the famous pyramid. Dark Side of the Moon, Pink Floyd. Um, this wasn't an album that I was really desperate to own. I mean, I've heard it before because my dad would have played this to death when I was younger. There'll be other Pink Floyd albums that I've got and, you know, probably ones that I don't own yet that I may prefer to this. It's an essential, isn't it? You know, Dark Side of the Moon. I think, like, was it something like half the population of the world or something was said to own a copy of this album at one point? I don't know how accurate that could be. Not unsealed it yet. It's a gatefold sleeve, I believe, and it'll be, I think, just one disc, actually, black vinyl. This was 16 99 brand new from Juno, and um, it was the album afterwards that I was really excited about, but I just thought I'd get this as well. I'm aiming to slowly build up my Pink Floyd collection over this year. Not desperate to do it really quick like I have for certain acts. Dark Side of the Moon, I would have bought this sooner or later and um, looking forward to hearing that in its remastered glory. But the second album in that particular order from Juno was the one I was really excited about because I got an email from Juno saying that their sort of post-Christmas slash New Year sale had started and there was an album that it was I only found it really by accident on there because I was looking at all their stuff listed alphabetically and because this is a numerically starting band name group name project name this was quite high up on the list and I was like oh hang on I've heard of them no I wasn't very familiar and then I listened to a couple of the tracks, and I'm like, oh my god, it's Eurodance. And this album's been reduced, I think, just over £20 from nearly 30 I have to have it. And it's this one from Two Brothers on the Fourth Floor. This is the rather cumbersomely titled The Very Best Of 30th Anniversary Vinyl Edition. It's released on Music on Vinyl. Um, originally this came out as a 25th anniversary edition, digitally and on CD, so five years afterwards it got a limited edition Music on Vinyl release on Gold Vinyl, and it's limited to 2,000 copies. Music on Vinyl, the, is it classed as a record label, kind of? They have been absolutely amazing for me for just getting these Euro dance acts into my collection for the first time. Two Brothers on the Fourth Floor, I'd vaguely heard of them in the back of my mind, but they never really had any hits here in the UK. But they were quite big on the continent, as pretty much all these Euro dance acts that I like are. The stuff that I listen to, I only listen to a couple of the tracks, I'm like, yeah, I have to get this album. This has to go in my Euro dance collection. So, um, as is often the case with a Music on Vinyl reissue, it's come in what will be an adhesive outer sleeve. I'm just trying to decide now whether to get this open or not. Yeah, go on then. 
just try and be careful about it as I do want to see the disc and show you. Uh, this is a two album set as well. Both records will be gold vinyl. As you can see, it's gatefold. Open that up. So there we are. Technically, this is classed as Two Brothers on the Fourth Floor featuring Desiree and D Rock. So it's got a pretty sort of laborious act name as well as a rather overly descriptive album name. Let's get one of the discs out and show you. So Plain Black Inner. And there's your gold disc there. Very nice. The other one will look the same, so I need to show you that. Of course, there'll be slightly different centre labels on both discs. Yeah, I'm really excited to do a proper deep dive in this because I've only heard a couple of the tracks. I think their big single, their breakthrough one in Europe was Dreams Will Come Alive, hopefully. There'll be a clip of that in a moment. And there's remixes on here as well. I'll make sure I put this back in the music on vinyl outer sleeve later on as I want to conserve that hype sticker. But so excited to get into Two Brothers on the fourth floor. Sticking with Juno, this was actually an order that I made only a couple of days or so before I bought the Two Brothers and the Pink Floyd albums. And this is a band, I bought both their albums last year and loved them. I discovered them originally thanks to Steve Carlson, who anyone in the vinyl community on YouTube will know Steve. A good friend of mine, lovely bloke. But um, more importantly, it's relating to my music collection in this video. Certainly, he introduced me to a brilliant American dream pop slash indie pop band, Cigarettes After Sex, last year. And I bought both their albums and loved them both. I realised more recently that um, the singles that have come out from Cigarettes After Sex have actually never featured on any of their albums. So not only if I bought the singles, I'd be getting B-sides, obviously, that are exclusive, but the A-sides haven't been released physically before either. Um, they're one of those bands a bit like The Smiths to an extent, and New Order to an extent, early on in their careers. They released singles, and they released albums as well, but the singles didn't tend to be on the albums. So, two Cigarettes After Sex singles to show you here. This one is Affection. Wasn't much this, probably around six or seven pound. Side B, keep on loving you. We can't really say an awful lot about these. Um, I've heard a bit of affection. I've not heard their cover of Ario Speedwagon's Keep On Loving You yet. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'll show you this disc, but there's not much to look at as it's standard black vinyl there on seven inch, as you can see. When I realised that I could do with getting these Cigarettes After Sex singles because they're not actually on the two albums, the self-titled debut and the follow-up Cry. So that's Affection and one that came however many years later, you'll see the dates for these on screen, is Crush and the B-side to that is Sesame Syrup. So very, very minimal and, you know, monotone, monochrome, I should say, sleeve designs whenever you get anything from cigarettes after sex. It's a bit of glare on this, but I'm not going to bother taking it out of this protector. Uh, these protectors were provided by Juno as well, these protective sleeves, as you can probably tell from the Juno barcode sticker thing that they always put on all their stuff. Delighted to get those. And we're not done with cigarettes after sex, actually, because... I made an order for two records from a site I've never used before. I did register there. Oh, God, it might be getting on for a year ago. 
but never got around to buying anything from there and um, one thing is the remaining thing I needed to complete my cigarettes after sex physical singles and albums collection and the other thing afterwards I found it and I'm so so excited I never thought I'd own that for such a good price. The mailer is here. This website is also a physical record shop in Stoke-on-Trent, I think. It's called Global Groove Records. And they mainly specialise in dance music. But they do sell other stuff as well. I mean, I searched up Pink Floyd on there. And they had some cigarettes after sex. You can't call them dance music. Oh, we do have a flyer there. There we go. Their logo reminds me of sort of like, you know those um, live rave tapes that you could buy in the early and mid 90s? It reminds me of that. Some bump on the back there so you can follow them on all the social media. Yeah, they do new and used records. Does it say their address? Was I right? Yeah, uh, Hanley, which is near Stoke-on-Trent. So yeah, for all intents and purposes, I was right. Oh, wow. I'm so delighted with the second record in here. I'll show you the remaining cigarettes after sex one first though. Close my knife up because safety first. So I completed my cigarettes after sex collection so far. I'm expecting they might have a new album out this year. Don't quote me on that. I've not heard anything suggesting that's definite. It's just a feeling. This was their, I think, their very first physical release. This is an EP, 12-inch EP, obviously. And it's just called, I think, One, or it's written as I, but presumably it's called one i don't know but it's a four track ep with nothing's gonna hurt you baby i'm a firefighter dreaming of you and starry eyes and there again as with the seven inch singles none of those to the best of my knowledge have been released on any of the cigarettes after sex albums black vinyl again uh, nothing really much to look at there Although I do love these minimalist, arty, cigarettes after sex sleeves, really. They've got a really sort of nice aesthetic. And the music, I mean, check them out if you've never heard of them. Though I have mentioned them in the past on this channel when I've shown you the other albums. It's the sort of music anyone who's watched Twin Peaks will know. It's that kind of music that you hear on Twin Peaks a lot. It's just atmospheric, almost ambient, dream pop done in an indie style and it's just lovely it's magical really but there we go the i or one ep from cigarettes after sex Right then, this I think is going to be my favourite pickup of the day, this. I don't even know how I found it on Global Groove, because I don't remember searching for it. Maybe it came up as like a featured thing for sale. I think it's actually an unofficial or unauthorised reissue. It is, and I think that's technically the front side. I think I've put the rear side of it on uh, the information screen to the right of me. This is the Justified Ancients of Moomoo, also known as the KLF's Shag Times. Wow, this, like everything in the KLF slash the Jam slash the Time Lords back catalog was deleted pretty much, you know, as soon as they called it quits for the first time in the early 90s. This is, according to the Global Groove website, a 2019 reissue. And then when I looked at it on the Discogs database, there was a 2019 issue of this, but it was like classed as an unofficial release. And Global Groove, someone who works there, had actually contributed to the database entry there. So I'm presuming that's the edition I've got. It's a double album. I think it's on coloured vinyl. Marbled white is what it said on Discogs, but it didn't actually give any colour vinyl information on the Global Groove website. But let's have a look. 
Yeah, there we go. Marbled white, really. It's not actually that translucent. It's vaguely, you can see light through it. So not only have I got an album, the original copies of this, I dread to think, I've not even looked at them really. I'd love to do a comprehensive KLF and related vinyl collection. And I do actually have a KLF 12 inch single. I think it's downtown that I've got. The deleted singles are obviously a little bit cheaper generally to get than the deleted albums. Yeah, really good quality this to say it's arguably a bootleg. This won't be authorized by um, Jimmy Corti and Bill Drummond from KLF, but it's a compilation album of all the jams, early stuff, up to and including when they hit number one in the UK with Doctor in the TARDIS under the Time Lord's name and then pretty much after this album originally came out they changed the name even though this was the name of their record label but they changed the name of the duo to KLF and they started releasing these big UK top 10 hits like What Time Is Love, Last Train to Trans Central, Justified and Ancient, three amazing singles there from an absolutely amazing electronic dance duo. And this was £18.50. Okay, it's not official, but if you want the original, I'm not certain, but unless it's in poor condition, I'm assuming it's going to set you back a lot of money. Whereas Global Groove have got this edition that um, I'm not sure exactly who's responsible for it, but I am absolutely made up to the moon and back that I've got this album. Shag Times by the Jams. And we can finish today's records roundup video with yet another mail opening. Told you I had a lot of mail come today. This one's a very impulsive purchase, but it's another on sale item. I got an email from Rough Trade. This is Rough Trade's rather eye catching mailer. Their end of year, early 2023 sale had begun. There wasn't an awful lot there that I thought, oh yeah, I really want that. And then I saw this listed at $14.99, I think nearly half price from its original price. Um, it was classed as a Rough Trade exclusive. Only 200 copies pressed for Rough Trade. There is other editions of this that you can get that will be less limited. But I thought for 15 quid and then another, what, three pound odd in postage. Why not? Let me get it. And it is this album from the Soup Dragons. It's a compilation. This is Raw TV products, singles and rarities, 85 to 88. I've never collected the Soup Dragons. They're an indie band from Scotland. I'm more familiar with when they really hit the mainstream, sort of the late 80s, turn of the 90s, with their cover of I'm Free, which was a real sort of Mad Chester style baggy indie dance tune. And then the follow-up single to that, Mother Earth, did pretty well. And um, it was a bit of a departure in sound. They were kind of generally just more of a straightforward indie guitar band prior to that. And that's really what's covered on here. But I'll listen to a little bit before I decided to definitely buy this. And I'm glad I got this because uh, I really like their mid to late 80s, maybe shoegaze possibly to an extent, indie pop really. I thought with this being so limited, only 200 copies of this particular pressing for £15, can't go wrong. Yeah, I'll get it open because um, this is supposed to be on milky white vinyl. And it'd be handy for me to get it open just to check that they've definitely sent the right edition. I might not worry too much about saving that outer that's adhesive there as it doesn't have any Rough Trade hype sticker on it, just a barcode sticker. So, uh, nice inner sleeve there as well. And, yep, they sent me the right one, which I'm pleased about. Milky white vinyl. Excellent stuff there. Love it. So, a real mixed bag of stuff today, really. And um, the Soup Dragons, as I say, I wouldn't really have thought to buy this album 
had I not just been browsing the sale listings at Rough Trade, but um, I'm glad I've got this. Raw TV products from Scotland's Soup Dragons. Just trying to start a new, do something you want to. Let's start it again. Let's go high and turn. Give us shine, nobody knows. You wanna have fun, don't worry, be told. Let's waste some time. And you'll be mine. So there we are thank you for watching today's records roundup part 19 could be the longest records roundup i've done yet i won't be able to tell for certain until after the edit but um, if you stuck with me from the start all the way to now the finish i do thank you so much for that it's always a pleasure for me to show off my record collection and cds as well and of course mini discs i showed you an md last time and i've got another mini disc that's on the way that I'll be showing you in an upcoming video. Thank you especially, of course, to not only those who've watched this video, but to all my subscribers and my wonderful patrons as well. I'm going to go now. Loads to listen to. Again, mess to clear up of empty mailers and plastic, cellophane, and stuff that I need to chuck in the recycling. And uh, what would you start with first? What would you be interested in listening to? What wouldn't you be interested in listening to? Let me know in the comments below. And I do hope that you will join me again next time for my next records roundup and music collecting video. Cheers, everyone. See ya!